Today, live on the Marilyn Dennis Show, we reveal why belly fat can be deadly and how you can take the steps to get rid of your spare tire forever. Join our staff challenge and beat the battle of the bulge. And now, here she is, Marilyn Dennis. Hello, how are you? Nice to see you. Thanks for coming. Nice to meet you. your midriff. How, how are you feeling in here? Good? Good? Sit down for one moment. How's everybody? Anybody have a problem with belly fat? Your host is the queen. <laughs> the thing and the boom. Right here. Got to get rid of it. Okay. Today's show is all about belly fat. Most of us have it and we admit to it too. We all wish we could get rid of it. Both men and women too. It's one of the leading causes of heart disease and other serious illnesses. And so we've gathered our top health and wellness experts to show us how you can beat the battle of the bulge step by step. We really mean it this time. Let's get started with Dr. Melissa Hirschberg and Bryce Wild. There you go. Who has no belly fat? Do you belly fat? I, listen, I, I, uh, I'm going to be the first. I'm going to be the first to admit that I'd like to lose probably three or four pounds. I'm not getting around the midsection, and in particular because I've got diabetes and heart disease in my family. Okay. My biggest weakness, I was telling Dr. Hirschberg off, off uh, set, is wine and cheese. Like I, 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 I know. Wine like, and yeah. cheese. Hello. Really. Hello, everybody. <laughs> what is belly fat? Tell us, Dr. Melissa. Tell us. All right. So, you know, when we talk about the dangerous belly fat. What we're referring to is the fat that lies deep within our abdomen, the stuff that you can't see that surrounds our organs. So this is known as visceral fat, and it's dangerous right. because it releases all sorts of hormones that promote insulin resistance. Okay, and so the, 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 the danger is there, it is right there. So the one on the outside that I'm carrying right now, but you can't see because it camouflage with my top, <laughs> So, is, yeah. is, is, so that fake stuff is real stuff, but the one inside is the one that we really have to be concerned with. Right. So there's actually three types of belly fat. Okay. There's the stuff that lies under our skin, which mm -hmm. is subcutaneous fat. That's the stuff we can pinch, that we don't like the way it looks. Um, but that's not the dangerous fat. Then we have the intramuscular fat. That's the fat that, if you think of a steak and the marbling, yes. that's the fat there. And that's starting to get more dangerous. And then when we go behind the muscles, all around our organs, we have visceral fat. And that's what's hormonally active and inflammatory. The dangerous stuff. The dangerous let's, stuff. Let's introduce everyone to our one pound of uh, belly Sure, fat. go ahead. I'd like, well, where'd you get that? Where did we get, it's actually embalmed, uh, it's actually real fat. No, I'm kidding, it's not. That would be really gross, that'd be really gross. And you see how it's You've also. You've been hanging out with Dr. Oz too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He okay. actually brought real fat. I know I saw he did, that. that's why okay. I said that. Right here, you see how there's only a minor amount of uh, vascularization as well, that little yeah. red spot. So yeah. like fat has some vessels in it as well, you see that? These vessels actually bring blood to and from the fat. So as Dr. Hirschberg was saying, if this fat is pulsing out very bad for you, killer, by the way, hormones, yes. it's going to bring it all over the body, this visceral fat. Okay, so, uh, you know, I think even the skinniest person can have this problem, right? Very, Am I right? Very, very politically incorrect, but there's something this it's term... It's a politically incorrect... Skinny fat. There's something... No, 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 not the fact that a skinny person be fat. Okay, okay. No, but vi skinny fat is actually something that exists. Uh, some people... They actually, these people don't exercise enough. Yeah. Right? So okay. their marbling is high, but they look slim. And they're just as much in danger. So everybody's got to be careful. So how much... Like, if you have a tummy... I have a tummy. I know I've got to lose some weight. I got that. I got that. <laughs> I know that. But, but, but what I have on the outside is not really indicative of what I have on the inside. It could be, so I'm, I'm assuming with this tummy, I could have even more, more fat better. inside. That's what we need to know. And that's right. And so one thing, uh, uh, the easiest measure is just to get your um, uh, tape measure right. and measure around your waist. And you get your abdominal circumference. And that circumference grows as you put on both the visceral fat. And this sort of pushes the belly out mm -hmm. and makes it seem more protuberant. And then you get the subcutaneous fat. And as that grows, all this contributes to that waist circumference. And for women, if you get out your tape measure, if this is above 35 inches, that's a sign that you're storing too much of that unhealthy fat. Now, you're thinking of your jean size right now. <laughs> <laughs> and you're thinking that's your hip size, that's not your waist size. Yeah. And yeah. what about men? And for men, uh, we want to aim for less than 40 inches. Okay. Yeah. So that's really, a, you have to be aware of that. Okay. Genetic. Is it? 
Tell me. Absolutely. Genes, you know, control everything. You can't change your genes except for the ones that we wear, as you just mentioned, right? Yes. You know, mom and dad dealt you cards. You have what you have. But fat, visceral fat that we're talking about is so deadly that it will actually increase your genetic susceptibility to whatever you're predisposed to. Right. So what mom and dad have dealt you, so let's say diabetes, heart disease, all these things that we know belly fat in particular contributes towards. Look, the New England Journal of Medicine recently published a study, the largest, one of the largest of its kind, 390,000 people in uh, Europe, mm -hmm. okay, 10 different countries. These individuals who are in particularly uh, carrying too much belly fat doubled their uh, risk for cardiovascular disease, cancer, pro-inflammatory conditions, insulin resistance, all these things that are killing people today. So, so it's, not, it's not just the food though, it's not the predisposition, it's like the stress that we live in. Don't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, stress, uh, the stress hormone is cortisol. Oh. And what cortisol does is it increases, <laughs> it increases our I'm blood very sugar. Stressful right now. <laughs> yeah. 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 It increases our blood sugar and our insulin. So as we get stressed out, not only we tend to get hungry and eat more, yeah. but when we do eat more, our body says, you know, store that on your belly, store that on your belly. Mm. So absolutely minimizing stress is one way to help us uh, shed some of that. And we're going to talk about that throughout the show today. Don't worry about that because we've got a lot of other people coming in to talk to us. But we want to talk about targeting. Can you target belly fat? Can you just say, okay, i got to get rid of this. This is what I need to do. So you can't spot reduce, meaning mm. if you do like 200 crunches a day, you're not yeah. going to get rid of your belly fat. Remember that, remember that diet book years ago was spot reducing that, and then they said it didn't work. No. But you can. But what you can do um, is reduce the amount of high glycemic index carbohydrates you're eating okay. and exercise. Those two things in combination will increase your sensitivity to insulin, so you'll have less of it floating in your blood. Uh, you'll need less of it, and therefore you'll be more apt to shed the belly fat. Give us an example just if you can think of one right now, of, of something that we might eat every day that's really high glycemic and what a replacement would be. Okay, so examples, the most common example would probably be things like, you know, white bread or right. white rice or even things like crackers and cereals. Crackers pasta. and cheese. Pasta. Yeah, pasta. Crackers and cheese and wine. And if you can't get rid of pasta, cook it al dente because that's going to reduce the glycemic index tremendously. Right, right. So it does, don't have more than twice so a week. So I'm seeing a lot of white kind of... White carbs, absolutely, but it's also the glycemic load, meaning how much of it you're, how much of it you're taking in and what you're combining it with. So yeah. the best thing to do is make sure you're eating balanced meals. Make sure you're eating enough protein. Protein releases glucagon, which works in opposition to insulin. So always have meals that have protein and healthy fats, like the omega-3 fatty acids, yeah. and then just a smaller portion of carbohydrates, and ideally a whole grain carb. Yeah, when, when I found out, because I did the show, what, how much a pasta a yeah. portion should be, I was filling up the whole bowl. <laughs> I know. You know it should be like in this little espresso cup. Well, you know what That's I what do? I have all these tricks. So what I do is, when I, I love pasta, so I'll measure out half a cup of cooked pasta, and then I increase the portion size by adding these noodles that are called shirataki noodles, oh. which look like pasta. They seem like pasta, but really they're just yam fiber. And you can get them oh. all over. They're great. It's a sneaky trick. So it's a sneaky, sneaky trick. little trick. Well, yeah. listen, thanks for joining us. Oh, you don't seem to have a problem. Okay. <laughs> I work at it. I work you do. At well, that's it. good Absolutely. to know. Okay, yeah. so thanks for joining us. Bryce, is, uh, you're going to stay with us a little while longer. Uh, over the next five weeks, we're going to uh, we're challenging you to take part in finding belly fat alongside with some of my show staff. And we're going to meet them right now. Here we go. Yep. There we go. I'm Tara, I'm the food producer for the Marilyn Dennis Show, and I can't remember a time when I didn't have belly fat.